Hello, and welcome back to Homegrown Theater Camp. Today we have a special episode of our Theater Basics series where we'll explore the different theater layouts using Minecraft. Yes, that's right. We're here today in what has got to be the most cultured village in Minecraft with one, two, three, four separate theaters. Now we've built these theaters specifically to show off a few different theater layouts that you can use when performing plays at home and that are used in theaters around the world. So, without further ado, Let's begin the tour at the first theater. Now this is an alleyway theater, and it uses alleyway staging. Now it's called this, as you can see, because we have the actors that perform right on this runway type stage in the middle, and then on either side, we have the audience. So the stage there is sort of like the alleyway. We can go up here and get a bit of a closer look. As we can see, we've got the audience on one, two sides of the stage facing each other and then the actors will perform right there in the middle. Now the best places for you to be if you're an actor in alleyway theater are on either far side of the stage. You could be either on this side or over here on this side if you wanted to have the strongest positions. Now the reason that these are the strongest positions is because as you can see you're open to the most audience as possible but if you go somewhere in the middle no matter which way you face, you are closed off to some part of the audience. Now, the next theater that we'll be going to is a little bit like Alleyway, but it actually has audience on four sides. And this type of theater is called the Arena Theater. This can also be called Theater in the Round because sometimes, unlike the square that we've got set up here, the chairs will be set up more in a circle formation. But it's called an arena stage because the actors perform in the middle kind of like an arena. Now right now it looks like they're doing Waiting for Godot. Now, if I was in this production of Waiting for Godot, I would want to remember that in arena or theater in the round staging, the strongest places to be are the corners. You can see this because if I'm standing here, I am at least open partially to each of these audience banks. but. If I stand anywhere in the middle or at facing a different way, I am closed off completely to certain parts. So for those moments where you really need to have strong blocking and you want the audience to really see your character, you should put them on the corners. Now we can go up to get a slightly better look at this. As you can see, stage in the middle, surrounded on one, two, three, four sides by the audience. Good. The next theater that we're going to look at is modeled after Shakespeare's Globe Theater. This theater includes what is called a thrust stage, and you'll see why it's called that in just a second. In Shakespeare's Globe, the audience could either stand out here on the gravel or sit underneath either of these wooden levels up top. The actors would then perform on this stage. If we get a bird's eye view, we can see that the audience surrounds this stage on one, two, three sides, and the stage sort of thrusts out into the audience. Now that's why it gets this name. So if you're performing as an actor in a thrust stage setting, sort of like this actor is, maybe doing Hamlet, it's important to remember that you want to stay open to three sides of the stage at once. So to do this, it helps to be upstage, but if you want to go downstage, you just want to make sure that you are facing out rather than facing backwards like this because then you're closing yourself off to a portion of the audience. Good. Now, the next stage layout that we're going to be checking out is probably one that is most familiar to you. This is a stage layout that you find in a lot of auditoriums and honestly, though they're not, you know, drama theaters, even movie theaters use this stage layout. And this is the proscenium theater layout. So, if we go up past our little box office here, we can see then in the proscenium theater layout, we have the audience on one side, and then on the other side, quite simply, we've got the stage. Now, the reason this is called the proscenium theater layout is because of this proscenium arch. Now, the proscenium arch is really nice when you're doing a play because it sort of helps to frame the action on stage, almost like it's the, a picture frame for a painting. So, if we go up here, we can see that the actors in a proscenium theater have a lot more freedom because they only have to be open to one side in particular. So if I was an actor performing in this play here, which appears to be Endgame by Samuel Beckett, it would be very helpful to know that I actually only have to worry about being open to one side when I'm performing. 
and this can make things a lot more simple. But another thing to remember about proscenium staging is that usually the audience is very far away from the actors. So this can make it good for a piece that isn't particularly realistic or the visuals are very important. But if you want sort of gritty realism and you want to get the audience right up there in the action, proscenium staging might not be the best choice for you. So if we go up and get a bird's eye view, we can see that we have the audience on one side and the actors on the other. Proscenium staging is probably the most common and basic type of staging that you're going to see. So it's important that if you want to start, if you're just starting out in theater, you become very comfortable with it. This has been a special episode of Homegrown Theater Camp. We hope that showing you these four different theater layouts helps you better understand what each one is and how you can perform in them. Thank you for watching.